The Utah Utes meet the San Diego State Aztecs. Hi again, everybody, and welcome. Along with my partner, J.C. Pearson, I'm Chris Marlowe, San Diego State and Utah, two teams that are very happy that the non-conference schedule is over. Combined, they had a record of 1-7. and seven. They got beat up a bit, and they are looking forward to getting into conference. Yes, they are, Chris. You know that old saying, that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. These two teams really believe that because in the Mountain West Conference race, they are both still very much alive. Utah, the preseason pick in the Mountain West Conference, and this is a team that has a lot of weapons. Yes, and it all starts with the quarterback, Darnell Arsenault. This guy is coming off the best game of his career two weeks ago against Utah State, and he can make it happen. He's still developing in the passing game, but the coaches really love his legs. He's a mobile quarterback that will scramble around and try to hit the big play downfield. San Diego's main this, uh, concern this year, scoring points. However, there is a new sheriff in town. He plays quarterback. His name is Lon, and he put up 35 points last week. Yes, he did, but this is only the fourth start of his career. Although last week he had his best day yet, throwing for over 300 yards against Wyoming. He's more of a traditional quarterback, not real mobile. He just wants to sit in the pocket and throw the football. Last year, it was San Diego State running back Larry Nutt. He torched Utah for over 200 yards. Can he do it again, or will the Utes shut him down? It's the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. The Utes and the Aztecs. The kickoff is next. Standing deep is James Trevilian. Also back there is Dante Gamble. We're underway here in San Diego. Trevilian over his head and out of the end zone. The Aztecs will have the ball at their 20. Lon Sheriff will be the starting quarterback for the San Diego State Aztecs. He is a local kid who grew up just eight miles from the stadium. As a 12-year-old in Pop Warner football, he was a 120-pound offensive lineman. Four games into the Pop Warner season, the starting quarterback quit, and Sheriff took over. He has been the quarterback ever since. So the Aztecs first and 10 at the 20. And the ball straight up the middle, Larry Ned. Ned tackled for a one-yard gain. Ned is the featured back. We will see some of Trevelyan. Jared Tolver, the big wide receiver, on the outside. The offensive line has been beat up. Pitts is back this week. So is Ingram. Mike Houghton has been the steady member at center. So second down. Gain of yard on the last play. Opening series for the San Diego State Aztecs. Off play action. Man wide open. And the pass is complete on the far side to J.R. Tolver. A gain of nine. The Utah front four is solid. The big surprise has been freshman and Jason Kalfuzi leading the team with 37 tackles. Linebackers are big and aggressive. The stud there is Kautai Oleva'o. The secondary is considered the best in the Mountain West Conference. The Dysons at the corners. Jason Potter is the big hitter. Aztecs got the first down. Sheriff, three-step drop. Looking for a man to come open. And a flag is going to be thrown. Let's see. Flag thrown. The pass was intended for Derek Lewis at the 50. Covering was Patrick Dyson. They just run that quick three-step drop out there, and they pump it and got Patrick Dyson with an illegal contact downfield or pass interference. You see the ball is just up in the air, and you see number four, Dyson, right there. He's got his hands all over Tolbert. San Diego State, they, they know that they've got to make some big plays in the passing game because Utah is so big and strong up front. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Utah so big and strong up front, they know that they're going to have trouble with their running game, so they know that they have to make some big plays through the air. So 15 yards for the Aztecs, and Lon Sheriff, who always wanted to be a San Diego State Aztec, has his chance now, filling in for the injured Jack Hawley. And up the middle goes Larry Ned, and Ned at midfield. 
Ned is a 5'11 senior from Moreno Valley, California. However, he could have one more year of eligibility. He was a partial qualifier and could play next year if he graduates on time. And they need to have a big game out of Larry Ned today. He's a guy with an awful lot of ability. He's just banged up a little bit with that knee and with the offensive line injuries they've had. They just have not been able to get this running game on track. San Diego State moving the ball. Second down and four. The ball at midfield. Two wides go right. Sheriff, blitz coming, pass knocked down. Knifing in from the left side. Jason Kaufuzi, the freshman from Salt Lake City. It is a beautiful day for football here in San Diego. 72 degrees, no wind. It is a beach day, JC. This is a perfect day for football. We talked about that a little earlier. I mean, you can't ask for anything better weather-wise than what we have here today. So the Aztecs now with their first third down opportunity. Three wide receivers. Sheriff on third and six. Throws and it's batted down. Coming in from the stud linebacker position, number 43, Kautai Oleva'o. Yeah, Utah is just going to bring a lot of pressure on Sheriff, and you can see from the top of your screen, they bring two guys, and Oleva'o is just unblocked, gets his hands up, and is able to knock the pass down. It's going to be important for Sheriff to be able to recognize where the pressure is going to come from today. Justin Sisko will kick it for San Diego State. The Aztecs last in the Mountain West Conference in punting. They've had some problems. And Steve Smith, one of the great punt return men in the country, is deep. It's a short, wobbly kick, bouncing at the 20. And it gets a kind bounce where it's down. Thomas Howard getting down there to make the special teams play. A 30-yard punt, no return. We're just underway here in San Diego, California, the Mountain West Conference game of the week. First quarter, Utes nothing, Aztecs nothing. 13-02, remaining first quarter, no score. San Diego State and Utah, Darnell Arsenault. Part of a two-headed quarterback team a year ago with T.D. Croshaw. Arsenault winning the job in the second game of the season. They started with Croshaw, but the offense did not move, so now they have bet their season on Darnell Arsenal. First down for the Utes. Spot the ball to 20 yard line. Quick pass, right side. That's Cliff Russell. And Russell is bottled up. Gain of maybe a yard. Tackled by the Aztec middle linebacker, Brian Berg. Adam Tate, the featured running back, the junior college transfer. He is leading the Mountain West Conference in rushing. Steve Smith, Cliff Russell, the burners on the outside. Doug Kalfuzi, yes, the brother. There are so many Kalfuzi brothers. We'll update you on that, Doug Kalfuzi. The line is banged up, and he is the best of the bunch. As the Utah offensive line set for a second down play. Three yards gained on the play. And the ball to Adam Tate. And Tate is wrestled to the ground after a short game. San Diego State defensively not quite as good as last year, but they still have Jerome Haywood, 5'8", 280 pounds. He provides the presence up front. The linebackers are solid. Jamar Butler did not play football last year, has come on to have a good year. The secondary, Gamble and Sharp with the corners, Demps the leading tackler. Brian Russell is a former quarterback who played two years ago and is now the backup. Third down and four for Utah. Arsenault will work out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. Throws, pass caught. Steve Smith breaks away. Steve Smith at the 40. One man to beat. Steve Smith. Touchdown, Utah. Steve Smith, their big play guy, and he had his best career day last year against San Diego State, and he comes out with his first catch today and turns it into a huge touchdown for Utah, and he's a guy that they don't want to let get on track. He's a guy that's going to talk to them a lot. He's a mouthy guy, and when he's backing it up, there's nothing they can do about it. 74 yards 
Arsenault to Smith. Ryan Kaneshiro is on. Kaneshiro, a six foot sophomore from Salt Lake City. The holder is Croshaw. And Kaneshiro hits it. So the Utah Utes strike suddenly, JC. Yeah, they do, and Steve Smith coming into the game, they said that they were going to test these cornerbacks of San Diego State, and he just runs a curl route, and Gamble just misses the tackle, and after that, you can't let a speedster like Steve Smith in the open field because he's going to take it to the house on you. These corners really have a lot of pressure on them, especially if San Diego State's going to blitz, and you can see it's not that big of a play. It's just a curl route, and three guys are around him, and no one wraps him up and makes the tackle and Steve Smith if you don't get this guy wrapped up he's going to break a couple tackles and just take it to the house and as I said he's an emotional uh, emotional guy he's got a lot of attitude and a lot of mouth he's not a guy that you want to let get on track and look at look at coach that's what they need early on is to make some big plays and get this thing started right Steve Smith is a talker at the Mountain West Conference uh, preseason meetings a lot of the other players especially the Aztec defenders we're talking about this guy has a big mouth. We got to shut him up. Well, so far, Steve Smith doing some talking and doing the walking. Yeah, the only way you shut a guy like that up is to go out and hammer him. Right now, Steve is obviously one up on their entire defense, and he's going to be talking to all those guys, I guarantee you. Kick is high and deep. Wetman booms it through the end zone. So Golden Wetman does his job. It's the 20th meeting. San Diego State has won five of the last eight. The last game a, a year ago, 38-16. That was the fireworks game featuring Ned, Steve Smith, Cliff Russell, et cetera. And there have been some close ones. San Diego State moved the ball on their opening possession. Uh, then the drive stalled. So the Aztecs with their second opportunity. Lon Sheriff, 6-2, sophomore from Santee, California. He's one of three for nine yards. Off to a slow start. Sheriff hand the ball to Ned. And Ned finds the going tough on the right side. Sheldon Deckert, the middle linebacker, the sophomore from St. George, Utah, knifing in to make the play. Yeah, this running game is really going to struggle today because these guys up front are so strong. Utah's defensive line, they really occupy the line and allow the linebackers to run to the football. Ted Tolner, head man at USC for four years, in his seventh at San Diego State, the one-time starting quarterback at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And on the other side, Ron McBride. Ron McBride with seven straight winning seasons. 7-0 Utah, first quarter, Sheriff off play action. He's got plenty of time. Guns it outside. Terrific pass coverage. The pass intended for J.R. Tolver. Andre Dyson had him covered like a blanket. Dyson's one of the best cornerbacks in the Mountain West Conference, if not the country. He's got great feet and great acceleration. He's all over J.R. Tolliver on this last play. But Andre Dyson, they've had a little trouble covering the deep ball for some reason, and that kind of had the coaches puzzled a little bit. But he did a great job on that comeback route. Flag is down. Looks like a holding call against San Diego State, the preliminary indication. Holding. Offense. Decline. Third down. So the Aztecs faced with a third down. This is the situation that Ted Tolner told us he did not want to see today. And that's because his quarterback, Sheriff, is not a mobile guy. And you can expect to see Utah, especially in these long yardage situations, blitz him more, keep him in the pocket. Third and 12 from the 18. Sheriff breaks the tackle. Going to be way short of the first down. Andy Bowers, number 47, coming up to make the tackle. Sheriff is not a scrambler like uh, his predecessor, Jack Hawley. He wants to stay in the pocket. He does, and that right there, Utah wants him to get out and run the football. They know that he doesn't have the speed uh, and the quickness to make any big runs uh, on his own, so they're going to pressure him. If he's able to, to scramble and get out of the pocket, they feel good about the pursuit, tracking him down. Brian Simjanowski to kick. Cisco is the short kicker, the pooch kicker. Simjanowski is the boomer. Ted Tolmer telling us... Uh, that Simjanowski has 
An NFL leg. Didn't look like it on that one. Steve Smith fumbles the kick. And the Utes are going to come up with it. So two bad punts by San Diego State. A 35-yard punt. And a negative three return. So Steve Smith looking for a big play. Just took his eye off it. And the Utah Utes will have the ball in a seven-point lead when we come back. Utah scoring on a 74-yard pass. Arsenault to Steve Smith. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Beth? Well, Doug and Jason Kalfusi continuing the family tradition in Salt Lake City for Utah. Two of five brothers that have either played or coached for the Utes. Between them, 106 total victories for Utah. Ron McBride already has the scouting report on the nephews because Jason is the last brother to come through. He's got word that there's an eight-year-old down the line, guys, that should be the best of the bunch. Chris? Adam Tate breaking off the left side. He's got a big gain into Aztec territory. He takes it all the way to the 48-yard line, a gain of 13. Jomar Butler hanging on and making the tackle. And Adam Tate does a good job. He's the type of running back that Utah likes, the big, strong guys that can hit it up inside as well as protect the passer. And you can see they have a hat on a hat. You see red, white jerseys on black jerseys all over the place, and Adam Tate is just picking and choosing his way right now on that particular run. Adam Tate growing up in Alhambra, California, and then on to South, Mount San Antonio College. So first down for the Utes. The Utes offense cranked up. Swing it in the flat to Matt Nickel, the tight end. He gets a great block. Nickel at the 30. And he's pushed out of bounds by Jomar Butler. So well-designed play by the Utah offense. Yeah, very well blocked by the Utah offensive lineman. They just get out in front of Nickel. And Nick, all he has to do is run the football. You see they run the misdirection and throw the screen backside. But watch all the guys. If you can see the, the black jerseys on the ground right there, Matt Nickel just has to run downfield. A great call by Utah. Credit Joe McCullum, 6'6", senior from Canada. Making the big block, filling in for Eddie Ta'amu today, who will not play. Arsenault, good fake. And he hands it straight up the middle. And... Down goes Adam Tate. Tate's a big back, tough to bring down, 6'1", 230. Yeah, and they were really concerned about him coming into the ball game. But for San Diego State, they said that they wanted to dictate to Utah. They weren't concerned with what Utah was going to do offensively. They were going to blitz and do the things that they do, make Utah adjust to them. So far, it's not working out for them. So the Utah drive continuing here. The Utes up 7 to nothing, and looking for another score. Fourth play of the drive. Two wides go left. Arsenault lofting it into the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Cliff Russell. Arsenault throwing into double coverage. And Cliff Russell out jumped Dante Gamble and Will Demps. And that's just an example of the receiver, Cliff Russell, wanting the football more than the, de the defenders. He just goes up between two guys, Russell as well as Dante Gamble, and just comes down with the football. That should never happen. Ryan Kanashiro is on for the point after. So the big play offensive, Utah, making it happen. Kanashiro taking over the kicking duties, or at least the place kicking duties, from Golden Wetman, who had a rough start hitting field goals. And here in the first quarter, the Utah Utes, using their big play offense, have struck twice. One more time, Arsenault to Russell, and it's 14-0, Utes. First quarter here at Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Darnell Arsenault has thrown two touchdown passes. One to Steve Smith. And one to Cliff Russell. And the Aztecs uh, in a hole. Bobbled. Picked up by Trevelyan. And Trevelyan brings it out 
to the 21 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Aztecs looked like they had good coverage here. Yeah, they were right there. They had two guys there, but give Arsenal a lot of credit as well as Cliff Russell. You see, Arsenal is just going to lay it up there. Cliff Russell was running to the corner, and it's just a jump ball right here. He out jumps Gamble as well as Russell, and that shouldn't happen. You've got two defenders right there, and Gamble's all over him. He's got to make a play on the football right there. You see, he just misjudges it, but in that instance, you've got two guys around him. You can't let that happen. Chris, you've got to come up with that play, but give Cliff Russell a lot of credit for being aggressive. San Diego State first down. Essex need to get something going. Culver is drilled by Patrick Dyson. Pass incomplete. And Pat Dyson is the more physical corner of, of the, the Dyson brothers, and, and he's a guy that's going to come up and hammer you. He's a corner safety type of guy. Another quick drive for Utah. Four play 61 yards, a 16-yard toss into the end zone. The pass now ruled incomplete by the officials. Once pass again, ruled incomplete. So the Aztecs with a second down. This is an offense. 8-16. Okay, they're going to put a little bit of time back onto the clock. The stadium clock says 8.04, so they'll add 12 seconds. San Diego State has only scored 60 points this year, and 35 of them came last week. So a second and 10 for the Aztecs. Utah defense uh, appearing to be much stiffer than Wyoming's last week. And the ball to Ned. And Ned is brought down quickly. Larry Ned tackled. West Tafunga coming in to make the play. Tafunga listed as the rover. He's a senior and very, very smart. And you can see Tafunga, they just run that cross right there and mixes up that offensive line. And he comes in unblocked and makes a, a tackle for a loss on Larry Ned. Qualcomm Stadium, the Mountain West Conference game of the week. Chris Marlowe, J.C. Pearson, Beth Mullins down on the field. So far, the story has been Darnell Arsenault. Four for four, 121 yards, two touchdowns. Aztecs offense sputtering. 0 for two on third down so far today. Blitz, Sheriff picks it up, and the pass is incomplete. J.R. Tolver once again drops it. Early in the season, the Aztec receivers had problems with drops, and he's just taking his eye off it. Yeah, and that's what happens when you've got an aggressive corner out there that you know is going to come up and hit you also. You try to run before the ball gets there, and you see Tover, he just takes his eye off of it right there, and yeah. Dyson does come up and hammer him. If you're going to get hit like that, you might as well catch the ball, Chris. Yeah, he got a noose tie. He got a, <laughs> a cow tie job by Patrick Dyson. There is Steve Smith. And set to kick it away is Brian Simjanovsky. So far, the two punts for the Aztecs have been terrible. Oh, and Simjanovsky shanks it. The snap was low. It might have been tipped. Getting through was Thomas Fortune. The snap was low, and then it was bobbled by Simjanovsky. And it was just not a good play from the start. The snap is low, as you can see. It bounces off the ground. He fumbles with it, no. and then he just shanks it. It's not blocked at all. He just kicks it off the side of his foot. And you see right here, another look at it. This ball is not blocked at all. It just goes off the side of his foot, and that's just panic. Simjanovsky right here just starts to panic, and instead of going through with his mechanics, he just hurries and kicks the ball off the side of his foot. A terrible, terrible break for, for San Diego State. A frustrating first quarter for San Diego State. The Aztecs trail 14 to nothing. Utah with Arsenal back in control. Tate fumbles the ball. It's loose. And the Utes come up with it. Tate. Check that. That was Damian Hunter who lost the ball. The Utes pick it up. Michael Richardson on the bottom of the pile. And that just sums up the entire first quarter so far for San Diego State. They've got a chance to make a big play right here. You see the ball's just laying on the ground, and they've got guys all over it, but nobody grabs the football. And Utah State, Utah is able to come back and recover the fumble, but this was a big opportunity for San Diego State defensively to get off the football field. So Damian Hunter comes in for one play. He fumbles, and now he goes back out. He's replaced by the first stringer, Adam Tate. Arsenal, quarterback draw. 
Arsenault inside the 25 to the 23. Dante Gamble coming up from his right cornerback position. And this is what he brings to this offense, and that's why he's the guy, because he can make things happen so much. And, and they put in this design draw, quarterback draw for him. But watch Steve Smith outside. This guy. He's an aggressive guy, and look at him. Look how he goes after those defensive backs. He's beating them for a touchdown already, and look at that. He is like, he's got a defensive attitude out there playing wide receiver. If you're a defender, you can't let that happen out there. You've got to get on him. He was locked up with number 23, Garrett Pavelko, a junior from Del Mar. Arsenal pressure, and he throws it, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by San Diego State, Jomar Butler. The kid from Carson, California, coming up with the INT. That's the big play that they were looking for. They needed to get something going to get off the football field. Arsenal gets a little heat on him, and he just throws a bad ball. Butler is right in the passing lane and does a good job of catching the football. This is exactly what San Diego State needed, something to kind of ch change the momentum. They were on the field two times earlier, gave up two touchdowns. They come back on the field. Now they're able to take the ball away from Utah. 13-yard return on the interception. San Diego State, its best field position to open a drive. 14-0 Utah here in the first quarter. Sheriff with Tom. Throwing deep. Tover's got a step. And it's broken up. Patrick Dyson knocking the ball away. San Diego State, want, they, they want to test these corners. They've had a lot of trouble playing the deep ball. They said they want to throw deep at least eight or nine times today. And if that time Patrick Dyson comes up with the win, he almost got the pass interference. He's got to get his head around, and that's one of the problems they've been having with the deep ball. Either they're not in position or they get a penalty. If there's a question that Ted Toler has about Lon Sheriff, can he throw deep? He's had two shoulder surgeries in the last two years, and he doesn't quite have the zip that he did as a freshman. And the ball to Larry Ned. Ned trying the right side, and he is gang tackled by number 54, leading the uh, charge, Sheldon Decker. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Beth? Well, the defense did just what defensive coordinator Ken Delgado had asked of them after giving up the two touchdowns. He laid into the defense pretty good, guys. He said, hey, first and foremost, we've got to stop the run, which they did a little bit better. And second of all, we've got to maintain our passing lanes and stay inside because he wasn't impressed with the two passes from Arsenal. We thought they were good catches, but that time, they were in the right spot at the right time. Butler made the play. Chris? If I'm Ken Delgado also, Chris, I'm telling my corner, you better get after Steve Smith. I better not ever see a wide receiver do that to a defensive back again. San Diego State on third down. Blitz. Sheriff shakes it off and throws short and incomplete. So the Utah defensive scheme has been solid so far. Yeah, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. Put some pressure on Sheriff and make him think. You see right here, he's just trying to roll out. He gets out of the grasp of Arnold Parker, but then he throws the ball short. They've got third and long. If they throw that ball three yards and make a completion, it doesn't matter. It's still fourth down. Steve Smith set to return. Sim Janowski, who just had the worst punt of his career, a shank for negative four yards. Sim Janoski, it's a beauty. High spiral, Steve Smith fields it at the 22. He's got some room for a return. Smith getting some blocking. Smith and Smith to midfield. And the Aztecs knock his hat off. Will Demps with a big hit, but still a terrific return by Steve Smith, a 47-yard punt, but a 26-yard return. Yeah, this guy, Steve Smith, he is explosive. He's the Mountain West Conference's uh, uh, returning, all-league returning man, return man last week, and, uh, you know, that's what you've got to do to a guy like that. You've got to lay some wood on him, and you see right here, look at that hit. Allen just comes in when you've got a guy held up like that. The next guy coming in has got to come in and just unload on him. And especially a guy like Steve Smith, who's got a lot of confidence. He's going to talk to everybody on that football field. You want to hit him as much as possible. Just over four and a half minutes to play here in the first quarter. Utah 14, San Diego State nothing. Great fake. Adam Tate takes it to the outside. Loses the football, and San Diego State has it. Jomar Butler. 
Jomar Butler, who did not play college football last year. He had a hernia operation, did not play spring ball, kind of a lost soul. And Ken Delgado told us he was out at San Pedro High School. He talked to his coach, Ken Walsh, or Coach Walsh, and said, listen, what are you going to do about Jomar Butler? What can we do about Jomar Butler? And Walsh said, let me let me call him. Let me see if I can get him back in. And they did. And that was the best call ever for San Diego State because Jomar Butler is playing the best of all of their linebackers right now. They have two turnovers today, both caused by Jomar Butler. So San Diego State trying to get its offense on track. And the ball to Larry Ned. He turns the corner, and Ned has good yardage up to the 39-yard line. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to start to run the football, take this pressure off of Sheriff because Utah is going to be blitzing them. So Larry Ned is going to be big. 14-zip Utah. San Diego State getting a break. Sheriff with plenty of time, and his pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. The pass was intended for Derek Lewis. The covering was Dyson. One of the big linemen getting his hands up. So far, they're doing a good job of that. Utah's deflected a couple. Yeah, they have. But we talked about how important this running game for San Diego State's going to be today. Larry Ned last year averaged over five yards a carry. So far, he's about two and a half yards. But they really need a big game out of Larry Ned. Ned powers forward. Ned, uh, of course, had knee surgery, minor knee surgery, versus minor when it's somebody else in right. August. So he didn't play in the uh, first couple of games and has slowly worked his way back into the lineup. But he's still not 100%. Coach stole us. He's 90% maybe. And, and he won't tell them if he's hurting. He's a tough guy who wants to be out there and wants to make some plays for him. So he's not going to tell the coaching staff if he's hurting or not. He's just going to go out there and try to make some things happen for him. For the third bound conversions for San Diego State, 34%. Third down. So the clock is running. Juan Sheriff with a shaky start. Third down from the 35. It's a third and eight from the 35. Sheriff wafting. Ready for Lewis. And it's incomplete. So indeed, the Aztec wide receivers are testing. The Ute defenders, but so, so, so far unsuccessfully. Yeah, and Lon Sheriff had a lot of time to throw the football, but he just hurried it just a bit. Larry Ned did a good job of stepping up and taking on Cal Tai Olivajo, who was blitzing, to give Sheriff some extra time to throw the ball. And in that instance, Sheriff's got to settle down and not be in such a hurry and try to find a receiver downfield for a first down. Sim Janoski set the kick. You saw Steve Smith deep. Steve Smith more relaxed this week. He got married a couple of weeks ago during the bye week. Well, I don't know if that relaxes you or adds <laughs> more stress <laughs> to your life, but uh, he did, in fact, get married. Beautiful kick by Sim Janoski. Steve Smith, they say he has four three speed, and you can see that he is quick. Garrett Pavelko making the tackle. We've got another marker down. 50-yard punt, nine yards on the return. Looks like they're picking the flag up. They don't have a call or an indication. They're just going to play. So, all right, inadvertent flag. An inadvertent hanky. Ron McBride squad leading 14 to nothing here in the first quarter. Darnell Arsenault has been brilliant. A couple of touchdown passes. One for 74 yards. One for 16. Adam Tate. Tackle by Brian Russell. Tate leading the Mountain West Conference in scoring. He's the Mountain West Conference's leading rusher in terms of average yards per game. He has been a big addition because he could not play early. He missed the first game because of academic uh, uh, problems. Yeah, and he's a big guy, 230 pounds, and he's the kind of guy that the coaches really want back there. A good runner as well as a good blocker when they're throwing the football. From the 26, and the ball to Tate. 
Tate running over the 30-yard line, running behind Michael Richardson and Jordan Gross. And that's exactly what they like about him. He can move the pile. And if you see that pile, when Adam Tate hits it, that pile moves forward two or three yards. And that's what a big running back does for you. He gives you a positive yardage because he's always going forward and falling forward for extra yards. Tate trying to replace the former All Mountain West Conference performer Mike Anderson, who's now with the Denver Broncos and getting a chance to play with all the injuries up there. Anderson's turning out to be a lot better than people expected. A third and three. Aztecs blitz. Arsenault. He's got Russell, and he's got a first down. The blitz is coming, but they're not getting there, JC. The blitz is coming, but they are not getting there. They always have somebody running wide open, and they had Garrett Pavelko, the safety, in there on coverage, and for some reason, he just dropped the coverage. And you can see... Arsenal is just taking a quick three, four, five step drop and just throwing it outside. And you can see Cliff Russell is running wide open. You see 23, Garrett Pavelko trailing him. He just dropped coverage on him. That is a mental error, and they can't afford to let guys like Russell run wide open in their secondary. Eight yard gain on the pass play. First down. Arsenal dropped the ball, and he is buried. Andrew Brigham, number 98 was in on the play. Loss of four on the play. Air Force and Wyoming in the Mountain West. Out of the top 25. Minnesota handing Ohio State a big loss. Georgia on top of Vanderbilt in the fourth quarter. Southern Miss, a terrific football team this year, pounding Tulane in the fourth quarter. Purdue upending Northwestern, a 20-point lead. Most people thought Northwestern would win that today. Northwestern playing very well. So the youth hand the ball to Tate. Another good block, and Tate takes it across the 40, up to the 42. And if they can continue to run Tate like they're running him right now, it opens up the rest of this offense in the passing game. And you can see they just run the trap right there. You see the, the guard and the H-back just run right across and seal the outside guys and allow Tate to run the ball up inside. And when you've got a big guy like Tate, all he doesn't need very much because he's going to break some arm tackles, get some positive yardage for you. San Diego State defense averages allowing 22 points a game. They've already given up 14 here in the first quarter. Aztecs try for a key third down stop. Arsenal out of the shotgun. Throws dropped. Pass is dropped by Josh Lyman, the sophomore from Salt Lake City. So the Utes will have to kick it away. San Diego State again in that man coverage. And Butler just drops coverage on the outside again. But fortunately for San Diego State, the pass was incomplete. But they've got to tighten up their coverage schemes right now. We know that they're going to blitz a lot. In, and I'm sure Ken Delgado right there, the defensive coordinator, is going to gather those guys around out there and try to get those guys settled down. Golden Wetman to kick it away. Sean Pierce is deep. It's a low kick, returnable. And Pierce... Oh, he lets it roll, and that's a bad decision. It rolls inside the five. Let's see where they mark it. Marcus Jones was down there covering. They're going to mark it, the nose of the football, at the six-yard line, a 53-yard punt for Golden Wetman. And yeah, not a good decision by Pierce to let that ball bounce around. First of all, when he sees it go to the corner, he's got to run over there and get in front of it. But then when he does get in front of him, you see him just jogging right there. You've got to get over there, get in front of that football. And then once you get there, you've got to make that catch. Even though you may get hit, you're going to save your team three or four yards. But you've got to get in front of that football and field it. So far, it's been a Murphy's Law day for San Diego State. And I'm not talking about Jack Murphy or the old Murphy. It's everything that can go bad will go bad. And the Aztecs trailing 14 to nothing now backed up. The Aztecs keep it on the ground. Larry Ned, a preseason first-team all-conference performer, a top-20 running back, according to Lindy's and the Sporting News. Let's get down to Beth Mowens. Beth? Yeah, Steve Smith just went into the Utah locker room. Apparently, he's been suffering from stomach flu symptoms for the last couple of days, and he's been a bit dehydrated. It's pretty hot down here on the field. So they sent him into the locker room to hook him up to an IV. Bill Bean, the trainer, says he should be able to come back. Guys? 
Steve Smith, such an important performer for Utah. He does so many things, and he really sets the tone in terms of aggression and yeah, pounding. Yeah, obviously, and if he's played the way that he's played so far with the stomach flu, I hate to see him healthy. Lon Sheriff throws. Let's see if they mark that as a catch. Indeed, that is a catch. No, let's see. No, they're going to rule it incomplete. So J.R. Tolver having an awful time so far. Patrick Dyson so far. Dyson is getting the best of that matchup. Yeah, he really is. And this is a long throw for Sheriff to make. He's on the far hash mark and trying to throw the out to the wide side of the football field. Patrick Dyson has a lot of time to close on that football. That is the end of the first quarter. A first quarter dominated by the Utah Utes. 226 remaining first half. San Diego State, they've got to stop and go, and the pass is overthrown. Looking for Derek Lewis, one of the Aztecs' fastest receivers. He's a track man who just took up football about three years ago. The one thing he can do is streak down the sidelines. Yeah, but those plays work so much better when you've completed some of those quick stops and slants, and that's why I said that if the San Diego State can start throwing the ball a lot quicker, it's gonna open things up downfield for them. On second down, Sheriff with time, throws, and one of his best passes of the day, complete to J.R. Tolver at the 39-yard line. So Sheriff on target to Tolver, and that should be enough for a first down. Beth, what about Rodney Allen? I just spoke with the trainer, Gary Johnson. The report on Rodney is a sprained left knee. They say he is probably done for the afternoon. Chris? Okay, thank you very much, Beth. 11 yards on the pass completion, clock running. San Diego State trying to get some momentum. Ned breaks a draw. Larry Ned takes it to the 46, where he's dragged down by Arnold Parker. And Larry Ned is, is really looking good. He's had some good runs today, and I know that makes him feel much better about what he's able to do. And you see he just runs the draw and breaks it outside for a good gain for San Diego State. If they can get Larry Ned on track, that's going to help this offense tremendously. Larry Ned. He has gained 26 yards. He needed 23 to pass Kern Carson in the ninth on the all-time list. And the tackle made by Arnold Parker. Yeah, and this shows the inexperience of Sheriff. Parker is blitzing right in his line of, of sight. So he knows that he's got to either get rid of that football or try to avoid him. And you can see Parker is just coming right at him. And Sheriff sees him, but he just doesn't do anything. If you know that you can't get away, away from him, throw the football away. Don't just take a sack. San Diego State calls timeout. So the Aztecs use their second. Ted Tolner, Dave Lay, with a minute seven. And they have to go about you know, 60 yards for a touchdown, maybe 40 yards to be in range for a field goal. Yeah, and it, when you take sacks like that, it really pushes you back. And now they're in third and long, again, a position that they don't want to be in. But if he just throws that football away, they're in third and much shorter than, they've, than they were prior to the sack. We mentioned that San Diego State had had the difficult schedule, Arizona State, Illinois, Arizona, Oregon State. We talked to Tolner about that, and he said, we like to play tough teams to prepare us for the conference schedule, but we don't want to play four great teams. We'd like to have two large and two medium. Yeah, the problem with that is that these schedules are made so many years in advance that a team that may have not been that good when you originally scheduled them. Now, four or five years later, they are one of the best teams in the country, and you've got no choice but to play them. And that's exactly what happened with Illinois and Oregon State. All right, let's take a look at our wide out of the week, brought to you by Polaris. Leave your stress behind and take the time to get away. Polaris, the way out. Jared Tolver with his uh, best game as an Aztec, seven receptions, 129 yards. Didn't get into the end zone, but he put the pressure on. Wyoming struggling with a rash of injuries, having all kinds of problems. And quite frankly, your big play guys have to produce for you. You've got to make big plays in big games, and they're looking for some of that from these wide receivers, in particular Tolkien. San Diego State with a third and nine. Sheriff looking, 
Throws down the middle, incomplete. Pass underthrown at the 30. Looking for Sean Pierce. Good pressure up front. Yeah, they're really playing well defensively. Not only are they getting good pressure up front, but the secondary is playing very tight coverage downfield. So there's really no open receiver to throw to. Sheriff just tries to scramble around, uh, scramble around and step up in the pocket, make a throw, and he's not able to make it because Pierce has two guys all around him. Sim Janoski will kick it. He's a sophomore from Escondido, California. And Steve Smith standing at his 22. Looking for a boomer. It's low, it's returnable. Steve Smith jukes a man. And he has wrestled down on the far side. Garrick Simmons making the tackle. In the Mountain West, Air Force now with a comfortable lead at halftime over Wyoming. Air Force uh, owns a win over Utah. Head coach Ron McBride saying, hey, we played a pretty good game against Air Force. They were just on that day. It was a terrific game for them. Yeah, the problem that, that Coach McBride said that they've been having is that they just haven't been making plays, and the other teams have been making them. Well, so far this first half, they've made two big plays, and that's why they're up 14 to nothing. When Darnell Arsenault, the youth quarterback, plays well, Ron McBride's team usually gets a win. Arsenal having a great day. Hands the ball to Tate. He breaks off the left side, and he's very close to the first down. So it's been all Utah here in the first half, and it looks like uh, the Utes are going to run it out and be content to go into the locker room with a 14 to nothing lead. Utah getting a 74-yard pass play from Darnell Arsenal to Steve Smith. And then coming right back, three minutes later, Arsenault to Cliff Russell. Let's go down to Beth Mullins. Beth? Well, Chris, you guys have talked a little bit about Brian Russell, the converted quarterback who is now playing in the defensive backfield. Told me earlier this week he loves the challenge of playing against a guy like Steve Smith. He says it's always great to play against a guy you know who is going to be earning an NFL paycheck someday, especially with the secondary that we have, the converted quarterback, and two former walk-ons. He says we're just a bunch of blue-collar guys trying to earn our room and board. So far, it's the NFL prospect that's having the better afternoon. Chris? Now, interestingly, Brian Russell would like to play in the NFL. Smart guy, has the size. The question on him is speed. And uh, interestingly, this week, uh, Ted Tolner designating, designating uh, Russell as the backup quarterback. So if something would happen to Sheriff, Russell would come in. Yeah, but uh, he's got to first concentrate on getting this defense together, in particular the secondary, because they gave up two big plays early in the ball game that really got them in the hole. But give credit to Ken Delgado's unit. They could have sulked, they could have given up three touchdowns or four, but he rallied his troops, the two big plays, the two big pass plays, but uh, those occurred in the first quarter, and since then the Aztec defense has looked pretty good. Yeah, they have played well since then, and I'm sure when they go in at halftime, they're gonna talk about continuing to do what they've been doing, but take away the big plays. 17 seconds to play first half. Utah throws the short screen, Cliff Russell, and he's bottled up at the 44, and we've got a flag down. It may be roughing the passer, the flag at the 29-yard line of Utah, and Darnell Arsenault clapping his hands. It could be roughing. Yeah, that is that is what it's going to be, and very unfortunate for San Diego State because we just talked about how well they've been playing defensively, and then they get to the end of the half, and they have a big mental error by roughing the passer, which could get Utah in pretty good field position and attempt a field goal going in at halftime. If you're wondering about the Utah kicking game, let's get the call first. The passer, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Utah's kicking game has been horrendous this year. Golden Wetman started off as the place kicker. He went one for nine. Ryan Kaneshiro has taken over. He's 0 for one. So combined, they are one for 10. Let's see if uh, they try to get a quick strike here. Nine seconds to play. Quick pass play might get them in range for Wetman. Arsenault looking deep, throws over the middle, and 
That ball bounced. Pass incomplete. Ricky Sharp was there. The pass intended for Russell. And we have one second remaining. It looks like Utah is going to go ahead and, and attempt the field goal here. But you see the end of the play here. The ball is just way underthrown. And Ricky Sharp tries to make a play on it. Come up with the interception. The ball just hit the ground before he's able to get to it. So they're going to mark the ball at the 41. So we're talking a 58-yard field goal. Ron McBride says that Golden Wetman has a terrific leg. A 58-yard field goal for Wetman. It's on the way, and it's going to come up short. It's way short, but in that situation, you've got nothing to lose. One second to go. Either you make it or you don't, and you're, everyone goes into halftime. So that's the end of the first half, the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week. Darnell Arsenault, as we uh, told you at the top of the show, he would be the star. And Ted Tolner has to be disappointed with an offense that could not put up a single point. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Beth. Well, Coach, your thoughts on the defensive effort that your team put in in that well, first half? The has been playing great, and then we had to, of course, had the opportunity to put them away in the first quarter with at least two more scores, and then the, the offense turned the ball over twice. So you can't do that. I mean, we have big gains, and we turn the ball over. Now, now they kind of settled into it. Their defense has kind of settled in. Now, our offense has got to be much better. Thanks, Coach. Back at Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego, California, the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week, Utah leading San Diego State 14 to nothing. Welcome back, everybody, along with J.C. Pearson. I'm Chris Marlowe. Two big storylines coming in. Utah, could it make big plays? Could the San Diego State defense stop them from making big plays? Well, a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. Early on, the Utah offense made two big plays, scored touchdowns through the air. But defensively, after that, San Diego State really settled down and started to play well. Highlight reel for Utah, including Darnell Arsenault. Had a great start and really finished it up. Yeah, he did. And they had a big play early in their first series to Steve Smith right here. Just runs the curl. Three guys missed the tackle and he runs 74 yards for the touchdown. Then they come back on their very next series and they run the corner route for 16 yards to Cliff Russell who goes high up and makes a tremendous catch to go up 14-0 at that point. San Diego State really frustrated offensively. Can't get very much going on the ground. Sheriff having a tough first half. They've gotten a lot of, gotten a lot of pressure on him so far, and he's really started to hurry some throws as well. So it's going to be interesting to see if San Diego State can go in at halftime and make the necessary adjustments to be successful in the second half. The total yardage, uh, Utah nearly doubling up San Diego State. Utah's had a couple of turnovers, but it really hasn't hurt them. And once again, the, the big story is Utah's defense against a suddenly anemic San Diego State offense. The Aztecs thought that they had their problems worked out last week when they scored 35 points at Wyoming. The Utah defense much stiffer. Look at the quarterback comparison. Arsenal having a terrific game, 8 of 12, 142 and two touches. And Lon Sheriff unable to find his rhythm, 7 of 26, 71 yards and no touchdowns. For Sheriff, uh, not helped by some drops early by his wide receivers. And look at the running backs. Both have carried 13 times, and Tate getting the better of it, averaging nearly five yards a carry. Let's go down to Beth Mullins. Beth? Guys, I talked to Ted Toner on the way out of the locker room. He said, quite simply, we don't have the balance that we need. We are not running the ball enough. I believe it was uh, 17 rushes to 27 passing attempts in that first half. They said they need to get the ball into Larry Nett's hands. As long as it's 14 nothing on the scoreboard, we can still afford to run, even on second and 10. Chris? So Utah, which deferred until the second half. We'll get it. Steve Smith. Deep to return. Smith and Dyson, will Smith bring it out? No, he won't. Sim Janoski getting the ball into the end zone. You see a lot of that in the Mountain West Conference at altitude here at sea level. An impressive kickoff. Yeah, very impressive. It's going to be interesting to see how Utah comes out of halftime. If they're going to get back to this running game and run big Adam Tate, try to get him untracked, and that will open up the passing lanes for Darnell Arsenault. 
So the Utah offense averaging 23 points a game. Last year, they averaged 30 points a game. And they'll start first and 10 at their 20. And the ball to Adam Tate. Rough sledding on the left side, Jamar Butler, who played a terrific first half. And Jerome Hayward there to make the stop. And Hayward's going to be an important factor in this defense. If he can start to get some penetration, beat some of those double teams, split those guys, and get upfield, he can disrupt some things in the backfield. He's going to be a major key in the second half. Utah sends uh, their speediest wides right. Smith and Russell on second down. Arsenault. Out of the backfield, the pass is complete. Number, number 89, Matt Nickel. He takes the ball to the 30-yard line, very close to the first down. Might be just a bit short. Nickel, a senior from Tacoma, Washington. Signed with Utah in 1993. A number of these Utah players have been around, it seems, forever. <laughs> And that's a long time and you know they get these guys obviously they come back from some of these missions and and they're more mature they're a little older and they're more mature and, and they're able to jump right back into the program and really not miss a beat third and one opening possession of the second half quarterback snake and let's see where they unpile it appears now well, let's wait Qualcomm Stadium here in San Diego, California, Mountain West Conference football. Utah leading San Diego State 14 to nothing, along with J.C. Pearson and J.C. Pearson and Beth Mullins. I'm Chris Marlowe. First half dominated by Utah. Darnell Arsenault having a big first half statistically. And that was good for the first down. And Essex show blitz. Now they back out. And that's going to be a false start. Left side of the line perhaps didn't get the audible there. And what, what happens, those offensive linemen, they start to see those linebackers creep up in there, and they know that they, they've got to step out and, and pick them up quickly. And sometimes that causes those guys to not listen for the snap count. You see the left side of your screen, that offensive guard just jumps out right there. And, and those offensive linemen, as soon as that happens, they know that they've messed up, and you see those heads drop, and you can see he just feels terrible about it. That's offensive lineman, the left guard, Joe McCallum. So first and 15 now. Tate blasts off tackle, and he takes the ball all the way to the 38-yard line before he's wrestled to the ground by Brian Russell. And even though Adam Tate is a big guy at 230 pounds, he's got good feet on him and good vision. And you can see he's going to bring this back all the way to the other side of the back side of the line and just finds a hole to get through. When you've got a big, strong guy that has the vision and the feet that Adam Tate has, you've got to get him the football. And that's why they like him so very much. 12 yards on the carry for Adam Tate. Second and short. Loose ball. Wrestling match, and it looks like uh, Utah will keep it. Utah's been a little sloppy with its ball handling, but it hasn't cost them yet. Yeah, it hasn't cost them too much, and this is just an exchange problem with the center, Dustin McQuivy. And you can see the ball just doesn't really get up, and Arsenal never really has a handle on the football. And there was an opportunity for San Diego State to come up with a big play defensively. McQuivy filling in for Steve McCain. McCain injured a knee and is not playing today. McQuivy, a redshirt freshman from Bountiful, Utah. So a third and three. Utah out of the shotgun. Christensen in motion. Pass complete. Christensen is going to be tackled short of the first down. A superb tackle by Brian Russell who started his career at Penn University, the first freshman to start there as a quarterback, and he's shaken up a bit. Yeah, but that was a great job by Brian Russell, even though he got shook up a bit there, to come up and make a good tackle, and you can see they're just gonna throw the ball out to the flat and hopefully pick up enough yardage for the first down, but Brian Russell's able to come up, wrap him up, and stop him short of the first down. And this is a great tackle. You see how he just lunges into the receiver and wraps him up. That is a form tackle. Sean Pierce 
And he's going to field it at the eight. Brings it straight back up out to the 20. So San Diego State will get its first possession of the second half. The San Diego State offense anemic in the first half. A 52 yard punt, a 13 yard return. We're coming back 14 to nothing, Utah. Welcome back to San Diego, the Aztecs with a big pass play to Derek Lewis of 27 yards, working themselves out of a hole. Yeah, they're finally able to hit one of these plays on the deep out over here, and Derek Lewis is in the slot and just runs it out and is able to use his speed. He's a track guy, and, and he's a guy that is really starting to, to develop, he, but he's got to learn how to control his speed. He's, he's not on the track on the football field. Defense has played fairly well for San Diego State. After allowing uh, two first quarter touchdowns, the Aztecs have shut out the Utes. Trevilian with a carry. But the offense has been unable to get a drive going, even really to threaten. Got a face mask against Utah. And now they're going to have great field position where at least now they can threaten to get into the scoring zone. And, you know, a guy like Trevilian, they should run some screens to him, get him the ball on the outside. Personal foul. Face mask, deep yards, into the run, So a 15-yarder tagged on, something Rod McBride does not like at all. Yeah, but as I was saying, a guy like Trevelyan, you don't want to hit him up inside against this big, strong Utah defensive line. Get him around the edge, throw the ball out there to him, and hopefully he can make something happen. You see right here on the run to Trevelyan, there's the face mask right there. And that's not just the, the, the five-yard kind. That is the, the personal foul that gives them a big 15-yard penalty. Garrett Smith guilty of the infraction. San Diego State first down on the draw to Ned. Stumbles a bit. It just doesn't look like he has the explosion that we saw last year and certainly on tape this year. Yeah, and I think that knee is still bothering him a little bit. On that particular play, it looks like his brain is telling him what to do, but his body is not quite up to speed and able to do it. And, and believe me, I've been in that situation many times of trying to come back from an injury, and your mind tells you to do one thing, but your body just seems to be a, a second or two off, and, and obviously that throws everything out of whack for you. So the Aztecs from the U-34, second and nine. Ned, and he is gang tackled after a short game. Jason Potter, the senior from Murray, Utah, coming up to make the hit, flag down. Potter, father, a BYU basketball player. We've got a hold on San Diego State. So that's going to back the Aztecs up. And that's tough offensively for San Diego State, especially since they are not in a rhythm. They're, they're not getting anything. Holding. Offense. 10 yards. Spot of the foul. Remain second down. They're not getting anything going offensively, and now when you get penalties, it's tough. Ted Tolner, we asked him uh, last night, uh, who would he compare Lon Sheriff to in terms of former San Diego State quarterbacks? Certainly, San Diego State has had a number of great ones. He compared Lon Sheriff in terms of ability, at least athletically, to Jesse Freitas and Craig Penrose. If you're not familiar with San Diego State football, the two players that led the nation in passing, that kind of ability, they're not going to scramble. you got to give them time, and they can be accurate. Sheriff not making it happen today, but starting to get a little momentum, perhaps. He's pressured up the middle, and he is buried on the blitz. Breaking through, Jason Kalfusi, who leads the team in tacklers. He's got a couple of sacks. Give him another one. Bowers was there. Kalfusi and Bowers converging. And you can see they've run this blitz all day long. It's just a twist outside, and Sheriff has got to recognize that, and he's showing some of his inexperience right now because he's not seeing where the blitz is coming from. They know that the blitz is going to come from somewhere, and his job as the quarterback is to find out where and then try to avoid it and get rid of the football. He's just not picking it up right now. Loss of eight. Aztecs working their word backwards. It's third and a mile. 
And the play is blown dead. So another penalty. Head referee Gerald Wright. Offense. Third down. And the Aztec offense starting to unravel quicker than a Firestone tire. Yeah, just when it looks like they are starting to get something going, they shoot themselves in the foot with penalty after penalty. It's been tough enough for them offensively to make some plays and get into positive territory, but it makes it even tougher when they've got to battle themselves also. If you're wondering about quarterback depth for San Diego State, Jack Hawley. The starter who played most of last year broke a bone in his neck in the second game against Illinois. He has gone for the season. He has applied for a medical redshirt. So Ron Sheriff, really the only active quarterback on the roster that has experience. Sheriff dumps it over the middle to Ned, and he is going to be corralled way short of the first down. West Tafunga was there. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Beth. Well, Brandon Dart for Utah knows a little about, bit about playing in pain. This is his seventh season with the Utes, and this is the first one that he's been healthy for. His medical history is even painful to look at as you track the injuries that he has suffered, and the numbers speak for themselves. Seven years, eight major injuries, 21 games, and his total rehab time from all those injuries, guys, four years. He says the most pain, though, that he gets is inflicted by Coach McBride, who calls him dad because he's been around almost as long as the coach has. Chris? Good story, Beth. Uh, Interestingly, when he applied to the NCAA for his last uh, medical red shirt, they said, this guy's so bad up, we'll give him two years. Yeah. Gus the seven. <laughs> Even he was surprised. Sim Janoski, a terrific punt. Steve Smith at the three. Eludes a man. Steve Smith, he has no fear, folks. He got to the 15, knocked back a bit. And you know that's confidence right there. To be able to catch a punt on the three-yard line, it takes a lot of confidence. And the reason why he's able to do that is because he splits these two guys also. So that's where the confidence comes from. You see, there's two guys right on him. But watch this. He's, he just splits them, and he's able to turn it into positive yardage. That should not happen. They've got to go down there, keep leverage on him, and hammer him. But that's where that confidence comes from, being able to make plays. You know, last year, he was listed at six feet. I was looking at my board, six feet. This year, he's 5'8", so he shrunk four <laughs> inches, but he's still dangerous. Steve Smith pitched the ball to Adam Tate. Tate has not been spectacular, but he's been very, very solid. Tackle by Will Demps. And offensively for Utah, I'm sure they still want to get some more consistency going. And you can see that's exactly why they made the quarterback change. Arsenault is out. In comes T.D. Croshaw because they're looking for some kind of spark offensively. T.D. is the son of a football coach. T.D. stands for Trace Denzel. Started four games last year, threw for 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns. Different kind of player than Arsenault. Won't scramble a bit. Try to throw and locate receivers. Hand the ball to Tate. San Diego State defense playing with renewed intensity. Yeah, they, they are really playing well. And with a guy like Croshaw in the ball game, the running game for Utah becomes even more important because he's not going to be a guy that's going to scramble around and try to make some plays downfield. So they're kind of playing into San Diego State's hands because they're going to be blitzing this guy quite a bit. And if he's not mobile and able to get out of there, they could come up with some big plays. Arsenault on the sideline, T.D. Croshaw, a senior from St. George, Utah, in. He's experienced, knows what he's doing. He'll work out of the shotgun on third down. Croshaw waiting for Russell to come open, and it's in and out of his hands at about the 43. Cliff Russell could not hold on. Dante Campbell and Brian Russell with the coverage. So the San Diego State defense holds once again, and the Utes will kick it away. Very good coverage out there by Gamble and Russell. Covering Smith and, Ru and Cliff Russell out there. Croshaw just tries to force it in out there and make a big play. The San Diego State's all over. Here's Golden Wetman. Pierce is deep. High spiral. Pierce retreats. Eludes one tackle. Around the corner. Spins by a man. A pretty good return out to the 46. So the San Diego State Aztecs will have excellent field position with 52 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Air Force by 10 in the third quarter over Wyoming in a Mountain West contest. Oklahoma upsetting Kansas State. That game's at the half. 
Minnesota drilling Ohio State. That's a final. Florida pounding Auburn at halftime. Steve Spurrier's guys. Oregon on top of USC. The Trojan season going down the drain. Georgia winning by 10 at Vanderbilt. And California surprising UCLA. Well, that Pac-10 is wild this year, Jason. Wild, and, and all over the country, there are upsets every week. And around Lewis, and Lewis has got the first down. So Derek Lewis, a junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, goes for 10. Aztec first down. Southern Miss big over Tulane today. Michigan whomping Indiana in the third. Purdue. Beating Northwestern and Texas by three over Colorado, South Carolina. Big win over Arkansas. Boy, South Carolina, Lou Holtz doing a great job this year. Got that team rolling. One of the teams that uses that, uh, that New Mexico defense, the all-out blitz, the confusion by infusion or whatever they call it. <laughs> San Diego State trying to break through. And the Aztecs gain about four. Larry Ned. A second team all Mountain West running back a year ago. Ned splitting time with Jonas Lewis, who has since uh, gone to the NFL, and Ned getting his chance this year, but slowed by the knee injury. Yeah, but that was a very good run by Larry Ned. Even though it was a four yard gain, he hit it up in there. He didn't try to bounce it out and make something out of nothing. That's the end of the third quarter. Utah 14, Aztecs nothing. San Diego State coaching staff trying to figure out. How to get some points on the board. The Utah Utes leading the San Diego State Aztecs at the end of three, 14 to nothing. Start of the fourth quarter, Chris Marlowe, J.C. Pearson, Beth Moens. We have a moment. It's time for Where Are They Now? Brought to you by HotJobs.com. Marshall Falk, what a terrific player he was for San Diego State. All-time rushing leader. It's a record 12 points per game. Now running back for the St. Louis Rams. In 1992, one of the few sophomores to finish second in the Heisman Trophy balloting. And then no one should have any trouble wondering where he is now. No, exactly. All they got to do is turn the TV on Sunday. And they'll see him, that's for sure. San Diego State second and seven. Throw on the outside, catchable ball through the hands of J.R. Tolver. You know, as a defensive back, and you are a very good one, you like to see that with receivers, that when catchable balls are there, some go through their hands, some not. If he's catching everything, it's got to make it a little bit lyric. Yeah, it is, and it's, it makes you feel good because sometimes you may mess up in coverage and not be on him, and he may drop the ball anyway, which makes your job a lot easier. But if you continue to hammer those kind of guys, especially those speed guys, it, they tend to drop the ball a little more because they're worried about you hitting them. Been a great matchup on the outside. San Diego State receiver J.R. Tolver against Utah defensive back Patrick Dyson. Trevelyan in motion. It's a third and seven. Sheriff waiting for his man to come over. He's going to Tolver. Dyson's got his back turned, and Tolver makes the catch. Complete at the 12-yard line. Well, they said they wanted to go deep eight or nine times today, and Utah's had trouble playing the deep ball. And sooner or later, you're bound to hit one. You see, Sheriff, they run that, that slant and go outside. You see the pump right there, and he just throws the ball. The ball is underthrown, actually, and Dyson's not able to find it, but Tolver does a good job of finding the football and coming back and making a big catch for San Diego State. 29 yards on the pass play. Tolver has now caught seven for 89. Aztecs first down at the 12. And the ball to net. Tough sledding. It's back maybe to the line of scrimmage, maybe not. Garrett Smith, number 63, right there. You can see in the stats, things are starting to even out a little bit. That first quarter, it was very heavy Utah because of those two big pass plays. But now things are starting to even out a little bit. If San Diego State can make some more plays in the passing game and get in the end zone, we're going to have ourselves a ball game. 14 to nothing Utah here at Qualcomm Stadium. Ted Toler, Dave Lay trying to get the Aztecs into the end zone. 72% on the season. They pitch the ball to Ned. Cuts back. Larry Ned to the one. Well, take that to the five. Larry Ned 
good, strong run by Larry Ned. He just catches this ball, and he just goes downhill with it. And that's that's Larry Ned at his best, and that is what he gave you all the time when he was healthy. But watch how he just explodes right here. Look at this burst. Once he finds out where he's going to go, he plants it and goes north and south, and he's a big, strong guy also. Very good run by Larry Ned. Aztecs can get a first down. they got to get to the two. So it's a third and three for San Diego State. Might be two down territory for the Aztecs. Might have had movement on the right side. Didn't see a flag. Ned! Touchdown, San Diego State! It appeared that there was movement on the right side of the Aztec line. I don't see a marker down. That is going to be a touchdown for the Aztecs. Yes, it is. It looks like they may have gotten away with one. David Marino looks like he moved slightly before the, the ball was snapped, but as you said, there's no flag down, so evidently he didn't move. <laughs> so Larry Ned punches it in. Nate Tanberg on. And Tanberg cuts the lead to 14 to 7. Seven plays, 54 yards in two minutes and 42 seconds. Von Sheriff, Larry Ned, J.R. Tolver, the big play men for San Diego State, starting to come through. 13 10 to play in the game. The Aztecs are on the board on the strength of this Larry Ned run. We'll be back. With a chance to salt this game away, 447 to play. And they have a first down at their 25. Tate around the corner, big yardage. Tate gets about eight. Adam Tate tackled by Brian Russell. Tate coming in with two consecutive 100-yard gains. And Tate getting very close. He's got 98 today. And we've got a player down. Matt Nickel, the injured player. Nichols been a key player for Utah today. Three catches. He only had three coming in. And the Utah trainers will assist to him. Let's update you on the Mountain West score that we have Air Force. Starting to put points on the board. That game still in the fourth quarter, 44 to 26. Mike Thiessen with four rushing touchdowns, we're told. And good news, Matt Nickel is up. Matt is a 6'6 senior from Tacoma, Washington. It looks like he just got his ankle twisted. And you see right there on the right part of your screen, of your screen he just gets nicked right there in that right ankle. And sometimes those are the most painful injuries you can have. Just those little twists of your ankle. Seven really yards. Obvious. Seven yards on first down. And a second and short. And Utah going to run the ball. They can figure on that now. San Diego State can't stop the run. This game will be over. Utah wants to run it now. Mountain West Conference. Game of the week, Utah and San Diego State. Glad you're with us here in beautiful San Diego. It has been a beautiful day weather-wise. And if you're Utah, you have to feel pretty good. You haven't played all that great, but you're still leading 14 to seven. And if you're San Diego State, you have to think about some of the missed opportunities. Yeah, and this game is far from over, though. It's third down, and, and if they can hold them here, they'll get the ball back. Timeout taken by San Diego State. Utes by seven. 4.05 to go. We're in the fourth quarter. And it's a third and four for the Utes. Arsenault lofting it deep. Steve Smith's got a step. Steve Smith going to the house. Steve Smith touchdown. Wow. 69 yards. Arsenault to Steve Smith. And that's what speed does for you, Chris. Third and short, you just run a three-step fade and let your speed guy run under the football and go get it. And once Steve Smith catches it, there's not very many people that are going to catch him. 
on his way to the end zone. So Steve Smith with a 74 yarder in the first quarter a 69 yarder here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Kanishiro for the extra point. So the biggest play of the game a third and four Utah What a terrific play call. Give credit to Tommy Lee the Utah offensive coordinator the perfect time to throw this play and that's what you do you let your big time players make big time plays for you when you need them Steve Smith they said that they were going to come in and challenge these corners of San Diego State in particular number 22 gamble and you can see right here who do they go after they go after gamble in the crunch time Steve Smith beats him off the line of scrimmage and just takes it to the house that was a huge play for Utah and you can see Arsenal's just looking the whole way he just takes a three step drop and throws it up in the air and allows Smith to run under the ball and once he gets the ball in his hands with the step on you you're not going to be able to catch this young man give Utah a lot of credit for going to their big play guy when they needed a play and a perfect throw by Darnell Arsenal there is Tommy Lee third year as the offensive coordinator and uh, before that three years as the quarterback coach he coached eight years in Hawaii uh, at St. Louis High School one of the powerhouses over in the islands and, uh, what a call there yeah we just Tommy Lee we just saw Darnell Arsenal Arsenal also and has to be a good confidence booster for him after being taken out and then come back in and make a big touchdown throw to, to virtually seal this game Steve Smith two catches two touchdowns 143 yards as a former defensive back that has to make you sweat doesn't it make <laughs> well, you cringe a little bit you know that's what uh, Ken Delgado did not want to happen is to allow these guys to make big plays they were concerned about them and rightfully so because Steve Smith two catches two big touchdowns for the Utah youth McBride hoping for big plays today and he got three of them and his defense has played well enough to hold San Diego State to one touchdown 353 to play 21 to 7 Utah see if the Aztecs have anything left can they mount a scoring drive no blasting through is number 47 Andy Powers for the sack Ma'ake Kemoya too there also and they're going to continue to get heat on Sheriff they're not going to just let him sit back and throw the football even though they've got the lead Let's listen to the contact. You can see more of a, a thigh pad to the helmet by Andy Bowers, but again, they run that same blitz and he comes in untouched. Bowers, a 6'5, 279 senior from Salt Lake City. Aztecs with another second down penalty. Bowers. Leading the defense, four sacks today for the Utah defense. They only came in with six last in the Mountain West Conference. We asked defensive coordinator Kyle Whittingham about that. He said, hey, we've got a low sack total, but we get pressures, we get hurries. Maybe this is a turnaround game for his youth defense. So a second and 21 for the San Diego State Aztecs. And Sheriff is nearly picked off. Patrick Dyson there, Arnold Parker there. Hey, this secondary is one of the best, if not the best, in the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, they are very good top to bottom. And right now, when you know that the other team has got to throw the ball, you can just sit back and play the ball. And that's exactly what Arnold Parker did. Should have come up with the interception. He falls right under the curl route. The ball hits him right in the hands. And, you know, that might be why he's a defensive back, because if he could catch, He'd probably be on the other side of the ball. Kyle uh, Whittingham, you saw him right there. His defense has been magnificent today. Or it has been, or has it been in up San Diego State offense? I think a little bit of both. Larry Ned trying to make his way to the 20. And the Aztecs had to get for the first down. Tackle made by Jason Potter, the senior from Murray, Utah. There's Whittingham, one of the great players in BYU history. He was named the Sports Illustrated Player of the Week after the 1981 San Diego State game. 22 tackles and four sacks. He played in four straight Holiday Bowls, and he still looks young enough where he could play. Yeah, he looks like he's in, in great shape, and he's got these guys really playing well. 
Simjanowski to kick it away. And Steve Smith, the perhaps instructed to take the fair catch, does at the 34-yard line. Steve Smith talked a lot of stuff coming in. Throughout the season, he talks, he talks, he talks. But he has backed it up today. Our Dodge player of the game, Steve Smith, 199 total yards, two touchdowns. And this is why, first series of the game, he catches just a short hook, breaks a couple tackles, and he just takes it all the way to the house. And as I said, you can't let a guy like him get in the open field. And then when it's crunch time, he comes up with the big play, third and four. He just beats Gamble on the outside for another long touchdown. And that's what you want out of your big play guys. When it's time to make a big play, they step up. 2.18 to play. 21-7 Utah. Adam Tate, marker down. If this play holds, Tate will be over 100 yards for the third straight week. Let's get the call on the penalty. Looks like it's going to be offsides on San Diego State. And I'd be very surprised if we see any more passes out of Utah. I agree. Today, they just want to keep the ball on the ground and keep the clock moving. <laughs> Five yards, 15, remains first down. You can see right, right up top, Haywood right there just gets a slight jump and gets in the neutral zone. And you know, at this point, those offensive uh, linemen it, just got to fire off and try to open up some holes and, and see if they can get one or two first downs and really start to, to control this line of scrimmage and end this ball game. Take out three plays and Ken Delgado's defense has done a masterful job. However, those three plays, three big ones, accounting for the three Utah touchdowns. First and five, Tate gobbled up as he gets to the 40. How do you like Tate as a running back? Well, I think he, he fits very well with this Utah style of offense. He's just a big back. They don't want him to do much except for get them the tough yards, pound it up in there, loosen up the defense for them, and then they're going to nickel and dime you with the pass plays, then try to hit you downfield with their big play guys. Utah defense, Kautai Oliva'o, the Dyson gang. Very, very solid today. Have to be happy with uh, their performance. Kimball Christensen, very experienced Utah defense. They lost some good guys up front. John Frank, their rush specialist, and Chuck Pine. They lost the big man Richard Seals. But, uh, boy, I tell you, linebackers and defensive backs, this team is loaded. Yeah, the strength is definitely in the secondary and that linebacker position. But when you've got guys in that secondary that, that can cover the way these guys can cover, it allows you to do so many more things up front to bring pressure, to bring linebackers, and bring extra people because you don't have to help those corners in man-to-man -man coverage. Once again, the Mountain West Conference Game of the Week on ESPN Plus next week, San Diego State, BYU. Can the Aztecs rebound? BYU a bye this week. So they will be watching this with... Uh, with great interest. BYU, uh, it doesn't seem like any team in the Mountain West Conference is out of it with the possible exception of Wyoming. You never know how things will turn around. They're pretty beat up. But every other team in the league thinking, hey, if we get on a roll, we put it together, we can win the Mountain West Conference. Yeah, that's exactly right. Whichever team is able to get on a, on a roll and string together some wins is probably going to get out of this Mountain West Conference with the championship. The second and four for Utah. Utah trying to run out the clock. Tate, he's over 100 yards now. So Adam Tate, the junior college transfer from Mount San Antonio College, solidified the running game after the departure of the great Mike Anderson. Now the starting running back for the Denver Broncos. 25 carries for 103 yards for Adam Tate. Very workmanlike game for Adam Tate. He just hits the ball up inside runs with a lot of authority and a lot of power but what he does also is he helps them in their pass protection when the, when the other teams blitz them he's able to step up and take on those backers and those defensive ends and really has helped solidify this entire offense clock continues to run a disappointed crowd here at qualcomm stadium 
The Utah Utes dominating the San Diego State Aztecs. The Aztecs trailing 14 to seven at one point in the fourth quarter. They had a chance to perhaps get in the end zone, decided to settle for the field goal. Nate Tanberg missing from 42. And then Utah rebounding with the big play. San Diego State calls its final timeout. Ken Delgado disappointed. His defense going to give up 21 points, but you'd have to say that the defense played a lot better than that. Ron McBride considered a good guy. Let's go down to Beth Mowens with more on Coach McBride. Well, we see right there uh, in bold letters across the uh, cap of Ron McBride Mafu. It stands for Mental Toughness, Aggressiveness, Fanatical Effort, and Unity. It's an acronym that McBride came up with to describe his football philosophy. And guys, I'd say MAFU, they are four for four today with their effort. Utah, 50 seconds from its second win. You know, you look at the Utah schedule, Arizona beat them, could have won that game. California beat them, could have won that game. Washington State with a comfortable win. Air Force knocking off Utah, Ron McBride saying, hey, two of those wins we could have won. We could have a lot different record, but the theory of playing the tough schedule, well, maybe it's going to pay off for them. Yeah, and they said that they just didn't make the big plays. They didn't make any plays, and obviously today, they made three big plays for touchdowns and, and are able to get out here with the win. So it's run out the clock time. Kevin, Mc, uh, excuse me, Ron McBride, his squad is going to get its second win. They beat uh, Utah State two weeks ago, 35 to 14. And you know, it's hard to go on the road in the Mountain West Conference and win games. And so this is going to be a, a big pick me up for the Utes and a very big downer for San Diego State, which really thought it had a good chance to win this game. Well, this is, was a must win game for Utah if they wanted to stay in the conference race, of course. For San Diego State, it's just their, San Diego State, it's just their first, first loss in conference. So they can still control their destiny in the conference if they continue to, to win the rest of their games. That's going to do it. Clock runs out here at Qualcomm. The final score, Utah beats San Diego State 21 to 7. Darnell Arsenault with a huge game, 12 of 17, 230 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. If he keeps playing like that, Utah is going to be hard to beat. And that's why he's in there, because he makes things happen. They brought in Croshaw. Croshaw was not able to give him a spark. They go back to Arsenault. He comes back with a big touchdown to Steve Smith. So Darnell Arsenault stringing together two impressive performances back to back as he tears up Utah State and then works over the San Diego State Aztecs. 21 to 7, Tate. His final numbers, 26 carries for 104 yards. Team-wise, Utah improving to 2-4. and four. San Diego State dropping to 1-5. and five. All right, I'm told Coach McBride is available. Let's go down to Beth Mowens. Beth? Well, Coach, how important is it for you and your staff to have a weapon like Steve Smith in the arsenal that you can go to when you need a big play like that? you got big play guys. You know, you got a chance to pull one out just because a guy can make plays like that. You know, I think... You know, he does it time and time again. He's just, uh, you know, they he put the coverage up on him like that, and, and that guy's not going to be overcoming. Do you think that uh, the defensive effort uh, turned in its best performance uh, uh, to date for you? defense was awesome, absolutely awesome. I can't say enough about what they did. They gave the, op the offense so many opportunities, you know, to put this game away in the first half and in the third quarter and in the fourth quarter, and then, you know, sooner or later you're going to give up something. Uh, but the offense was spectacular and I congratulate the the, the, uh, the defensive coaches and the defensive players because they just you know they played unbelievable Our off offense was was obviously not good enough you know and, and uh, we didn't execute it well enough and, and uh, we just need to do a much better job you know?
do you try and attack some of those those offensive shortcomings in the week now as you prepare for oh, you Colorado gotta, State? You, know, you just got to take a look at the film, and I thought we had a lot of this solved uh, with the bye week, you know, but uh, evidently we didn't because they, uh, you know, they pretty much, you know, looked like they're in the first quarter of this game could be could be out of reach, you know, but uh, you know we get sloppy handling the football and and uh, turn it over a couple of times and keep and let them stay in the game. Best of luck next week. Congratulations hey. today, Coach. Thanks, Brian. Utes go to one and one in the Mountain West. Chris? All right. Uh, coaches are ne never satisfied. Ron McBride coming to San Diego, uh, favored by five. He walks out with a 21 to 7 win on three big plays. So Utah gets a win on the road in the Mountain West Conference. Once again, the final score Utah, an important win in the Mountain West Conference, beating the Aztecs 21 to 7. The preceding has been a presentation from ESPN Regional Television.